Is there any agenda, <coughs> any remnant of hope that somehow awakening will take all your pain away? Because as long as there's any expectation, any hope, any imagination of something being other than what it is, of your life being other than how it is, then that's a a prevention of truly realizing awakeness. <coughs> so then the question comes then why, why seek awakening in the first place? If nothing changes, what's the point? <coughs> What changes is not that life changes. But your capacity to meet life in openness, unadulterated openness. And that's where the freedom is. Freedom is the not contorting yourself, twisting yourself around the very naked experience of what is here in order to protect and defend and cushion or hope or dream or imagine or expect But to fully fall in love with this that arises, this that arises, this that arises, however it arises, whatever arises. <coughs> Life is wavy. Life is not static, life is not neutral, life is not perfect according to your idea of what is perfect. Life does not conform to your wishes, to your demands, to your will. Life by its very nature is wild, untamable. It may bubble along like a gentle spring, or it may be a tempest. That's not for you to control, to direct. To life by its very nature is movement. You, by your very nature, are op openness. To allow all movement, to deny nothing, to reject nothing, is a deep acceptance a deep acceptance. that allows everything, everything. And in allowing everything, what appears as duality, as opposites, is seen and experienced as one.
not because it's been neutralized but because the place or the space from which you see and experience is one is unity is non-division so that division, what appears to be divided or in opposition, pain, pleasure, joy, horror, etc., etc., ecstasy, agony, are seen and experienced within unified consciousness. So all extremes are experienced as arising in the one. So nothing needs to be excluded. That collapses the myth that anything needs to change in awakening. both fully awake and fully human. The human experience is messy. Awakeness is pristine. fully awake and fully human gives birth to a new consciousness that is fully alive, fully vital, fully present. The whole seeking mechanism comes to a stop in that. There is nothing to seek outside of that. Awakeness then becomes very ordinary. Very ordinary, but not unconscious. Very ordinary, but not falling back asleep. Very ordinary, but fully alive, fully open. In the capacity to to be open, to open to everything that arises in your experience, Awakeness naturally reveals itself. In that, in that openness, you, you meet life, you meet reality, not from internal noise, but from deep silence. So it's about examining and questioning in yourself, what is standing in the way of that which is already here? What is standing in the way of the simplicity of loving what is here? of opening fully without an edge to what is here. Whatever arises in this, whatever arises in your experience, whatever you're doing or not doing, whatever arises is your satsang.
Every moment is the invitation. Every moment is your guru. Not when you feel better. Not when you feel like it. Not when things are conforming to your idea of what a spiritual life looks like or feels like. But now, here, in every moment of your experience, here and wherever you are, whatever is happening, attention can be given to the dream, the hope, the expectation, the imagination, which pulls us into seeking something other than what is here, either as a dream of what may happen in the future, in the next moment, or as the dream of the past and the attempt to run away from that, or to avoid that, or not repeat that. Or attention can be given wholeheartedly to this now. Because each moment loves you without condition. Each moment is devoted to you without condition. Each moment doesn't hold back t from you. This moment doesn't say, well, I'll just give part of myself to you because you're not worthy. Life gives itself to you totally. However spiritual or unspiritual, enlightened or unenlightened, worthy or unworthy, good or not good, loved or unloved, lovable or unlovable, perfect or imperfect, you think you are, life gives itself to you totally. Your capacity to give your attention totally, your devotion to this without condition allows you and life to become one so that life moves through you unimpeded. And then you are guided not by your will, by personal will, but by something much more powerful than that. And then it's not a matter of what happens, but that what happens has no resistance to it. And in that non-resistance, there is grace. There is grace. Grace is not a place of perfection, other than it is perfect in its non-resistance. It's not perfect because it conforms to any idea or imagination of perfection according to personal will. It is the unimpeded flow of life itself. However wavy that may be, however stormy that may be, or however still that may be, however active or however passive, <coughs> 